Okay, I think it's good to go. Let me see. Yeah, fine. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, today in this video, I'd like to talk about how to get hired as a developer in Finland or basically European countries. Also, my tips will be applicable to other countries as well. A lot of people ask me throughout different channels, my YouTube channel, Instagram channel, uh, what's the trick to get hired in Finland basically because I'm based uh, on Finland but I think the rules are pretty much the same for the whole world the most countries at least European countries US and Canada there are some rules and laws are different in for instance Canada or USA regarding um, you know visa permits job uh, jobs these sort of things but as far as it's cons uh, is related to to you know to the tips for getting hired as a web developer it's pretty much the same i believe the very first thing i want to say is that well if you are inside the country it's much easier no matter which country you want to apply for as long as you are inside a country it's much easier also it's possible to apply for a job if you are outside a country and that's totally acceptable but it's a bit more difficult and i think it comes to a few reasons uh the very first thing is that the company that is going to uh, give you the contract and do the work permit for you actually they should be listed already in, in as as a company which is able to you know give that permission give that permit to you they, it, if, if they have hired some employers uh, employees already some developers already from other countries it should be really fine for them to do it for you as well but if if they haven't done it so far it's a bit challenging for them and they have no idea what to do and I believe that the paperwork is pretty is, is really easy I, I've never done that before because I applied when I was inside Finland so I'm not familiar with the paperwork but I've heard that it's not really complicated it's pretty much the same you just they just need to give you the contract and a hosting agreement i believe uh, at least my phd was like this and basically phd is like work there is no difference between work and a phd uh, in P phd european in european countries uh i i, I think i said phd <laughs> i confuse these things but yeah so if they have hired developers from other countries it's much easier for them to do this for you but if they haven't done this it's a bit difficult for them but the second reason i think is mostly because uh, they they know that if even if they give you the you know the hosting agreement or the contract when you want to apply for a resident permit or for work permit there is a chance that they don't that the immigrant service doesn't give you the visa so they worry that maybe you won't be there when they need you so it's a little bit challenging so they don't want to do this they don't want to uh, put themselves in danger uh, of not getting you in time so they prefer to have you here already and also it depends on different situations for instance if you're uh, if the other applicants are already inside the country and they're also competitive they're also experienced as much as you so if you don't bring any value into the table so it doesn't make sense for them to 
hire you but i think uh and and it's better for them to actually hire a guy that is already here so that's the thing i wanted to mention about being inside or outside the country but it shouldn't be really different that much just i believe you need to try a twice as before as uh twice as the time that you are here so just try over and over yeah the, it, it's gonna work it's gonna work but it's still be, it's better to be here now to be here uh you either need to find a job which is well basically that's the point or you need to be here as you know a student you need to have a study permit and a lot of a lot of people come as a student here to study and then find a job because it's much easier if you have the money you can apply for master's degree it's it's easy but if you want if you don't have money if you want scholarship well it's a bit difficult and if you want to come here as a phd student you need to find a position they will find you they have they have the fund to provide um, the salary but uh, it's a bit difficult but I think finding a PhD uh, vs finding a job uh, finding a PhD position is uh, easier if you have the, a, a good academic background otherwise if you have a good job background if you have enough experiences apply for a job so it depends on your situation and your skills uh, now the other tip I want to give you is that uh, no matter where you are and where you want to apply the in in web development world uh, basically as a software engineer or as a web developer or as a software as a um, data scientist as a machine learning engineer everything that is basically related to tech if you want to apply to these kind of jobs I think my, based on my experience is that um, you you just need to apply over and over more and more you know that's the whole point of this and apply as many uh, to as many applications as you can and don't limit yourself if you want if you want to find a job really fast don't limit yourself to uh, to to a certain uh, kinds of jobs for instance if you you it's not good that you say that I just want to be a JavaScript developer if you want to find a job fast you need to do PHP you need to do Python you need to do all sorts of things also apply to other types of uh, jobs in uh, tech like if you if you are a developer it, there, there's no problem to apply for for a job in um, data science world or in as a machine learning engineer you know when i started applying two years ago or yeah pretty much two years ago after my when i quit my phd i I have I had a limited uh, time to do that. I was around two. I, I had two months or maybe two months and a half to to find a job and actually extend my resident permit, and it was really difficult during that time. But what I remember is that I created multiple CVs for different jobs. I created CV for Python, one for you know JavaScript development created another CV for data science another for machine learning uh, engineer thing uh, I think I had four or five different CVs and the point here is that you need to tailor your CV uh, regarding the job you're applying to because it's really important and uh, the 
most important thing that the uh, uh, employers are looking for is that they want they uh, want to find a person a guy who has the most skills they want for for that job description so you need to align your skills and experiences written in your CV aligned with the descript job de job description and uh, that's the whole point if you want to be successful even if you don't have some of those skills listed in the job description the only thing you need to do is just put it there and read about it a little bit there is no hard line for you know truth or lie in, in this area uh, as long as you know a little bit about it that's fine just put it there first get the interview then during interviews maybe you find out that it's not suitable for you it's not a good job for you or they f will find out that even if you don't know that much about this job that's fine you 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 are uh, you are a good guy you can learn fast you are smart there is a chance that they understand this and they will hire you so it doesn't matter if you know all the things or not it's just if you know about 50% of that or 40% of that that's fine because at the end of the day there are a lot of things that are important for the employer and some of them are not even listed in your CV and you can't list them in your CV there's a chance that they like you because you know you're a good guy there is a chance that uh, they hire you because the other applicants are not as good as you you know and it depends on different situations the very first thing you need to do is getting the interviews the first the very first interview then the second interview and third interview usually have uh, three or four rounds of interviews depends on the company but yeah it's gonna be all good um, let me take a look at my notes here written I'm not sure if I missed anything or not and also somebody asked me that if English is okay or not I must say that yes uh, English is completely okay in Finland and um, especially in the world of technology if you want to find a job as a software engineer or a data scientist it's all good uh, at least in Finland and I've seen a lot of my friends finding a job in other European countries or in USA or Canada uh, well USA and Canada is of course in English uh, but uh, in other European countries yes they 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 are completely okay as long as you are okay with the uh, things they want you to do you know the skills they need you and yep I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about but yeah uh, please let me know uh, what you want to know and what I should talk about okay it was good to see you yeah I hope you enjoy this see you bye bye